Previously on Snow the Twilight Night, after beating the prologue lion, our survivors came to the settlement. Unfortunately, Dice God was not kind nor generous. Many people died giving birth, Eleanor, Oswaldo, Lily, and Cecilia. However, Ella did not let despair take her heart, and she gave birth to our first baby Angel. Bearing the despair in the past, now it's time to hunt again. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that alarm button. Hello YouTube, Jay's here from the Lantern Side Story, and welcome back to Kingdom Death Story, Snow the Twilight Night. As always, thank you so much for your love. You know, I read all the comments you guys left, and I just love every last one of them. So I just wanted to let you know that I love them. Anyway, let's get the show on the road. This year, we'll be hunting the level 1 lion. It is the same lion, yes, but it will be a little tougher than the last time. To be honest, I find this lion on Lantern Year 2 to be one of the most dangerous monsters we face. We will see how it goes. Our four warriors ventured through the darkness of the Kingdom Death to find the prey. As soon as we entered the lion's territory, we could realize that we are in. The smell of its urine was evident, but at least we can take some of it to innovate ammonia that we missed last year. On our way, we encountered a grass field filled with razor sharp leaves, but with luck, we managed to pass safely with no harms. Also, there was a fountain of a weeping face. Angel tried to drink the water from it, and the water was cleaner than anything she ever tasted. It was invigorating, but the presence of the lion crawling around was quite stressful. Hey, I heard these lions know a trick called ground fighting. A trick? Yeah, it likes to lay low, waiting for someone to come close, and BOOM! The snap gave a zolt to Pearl, Ricardo laughed, and Angel slapped his back. Any way to bypass the trick safely? Well, we can try to attack it from afar. It won't be rolling on the floor when it sees its blood. While they were talking or joking about strategy, they came across a prospector lying against a large stone face. The wounded man was tensed, holding his weapon tight on his hands. But as he saw our survivors were not a threat, he lowered his weapon. But Snow could see that his time is almost past. Snow approached and sat next to the dying prospector. The man handed a key and whispered with his last breath. This is the key to the port Gliss. Without it, you will never get through. None of them understand what he meant, but Snow decided to bury him properly, and while doing it, he pondered upon the meaning of this encounter. Uh, Snow? Pearl quietly called Snow and pointed at a distance. There, they found the lion laying low. Angel gave a short order. She will snipe the lion on top of the large stone face, while others will surround and attack it after the ground fighting is over. In the meantime, Pearl tried to mine the ore vein, which she failed and they positioned themselves. Angel drew the bone dart, miss, and she drew it again, miss, and again, and again. Two hours later, she drew it again, miss. This was going nowhere. Snow held the founding stone firmly on his hand and drew it. A strong crit on the beast's flank and it knocked the lion down. Ricardo took the opportunity to land another critical hit. The lion drew its fangs to maul someone there was no one knocked down, and instead it just sniffed the air to find the next target. This small scene of luck will become more meaningful later on the battle. Seeing the opportunity, Pearl rushed into the lion, but she was too hasty. Her attack missed, and lion struck her with his paw, and it broke her ribcage and killed her in one shot. <sighs> what a way to start a battle. You! Ricardo brandished his sword and rushed to the lion, but it was a trap. The lion's counterattack has hit Ricardo hard, but he stood firm with anger in his eyes. Survivors and the lion exchanged some wounds, and the snow drilled his feast on the lion's fleshy gut. The lion vomited all over snow. And it feels awesome! Haha, <laughs> I was kidding. It's just what the car says. We don't know what Snow saw on that vomit, but it was a sight enough to drive him mad. His arms slowly moved toward the twilight sword, as if it was dragged by something. The sword was clenched in his hands. Finally, he drew the sword. 
The lion tried to do the ground fighting again, but this time Angel knew it's not a time to miss. And Twilight's sword danced on Snow's hands, landing every hit all except once. One miss, and even after a long years later, Snow still wondered what would have happened if it did not miss that one attack. Dodging from Snow's attack, Lion leaped into Ricardo, who was waiting to pierce the beast with his sword. At the very last second, Lion managed to twist his body midair, and it tore off Ricardo's arms. No! Snow stabbed the beast and shouted at Angel, who was still mourning from the shock. Angel, use the headband, read its next move. From the blurry vision, Angel saw the lion's next attack, and with all her ingenuity left, she made it try Mao, and with no one laying on the ground, it just sniffed the air. The next part was simple. Angel used the headband to make the lion Mao, forcing it to waste its turn. The snow was there to slice it off. As its last effort, it tried to do the ground fighting trick again, but Angel's final blow pierced its neck and killed it. The battle was tough, but those who survived it grew stronger. Snow and Angel brought the resources from the lion and the remains of Ricardo and Pearl to the settlement, but Angel was afraid of the dog have seen. Gorm Storm was still pouring from time to time, and survivors had to spend time inside the hollow, and Snow performed the ritual of shadow dancing. In the shadow, Snow saw someone. He never told anyone what he saw that night, and only thing we know is that the darkness has taken place in his shadow. To brighten things up, there was some good news. Ella and Alexander decided to have more babies, and this time they were very lucky. Seven babies cried this year. Dante, Sabrina, Griffin, Balthazar, Sophia, Kaya, and Maya. And two of them were saviors. Saviors are mighty spirits of the domain of ethereal dreamers, and the spirits incarnate themselves to the blessed baby. The baby will vanish into the dream world and come back as a different being. Sabrina dreamt of the beast of Karatosis, the red savior, blessed with extreme strength. And Balthazar dreamt of the crown of Dorminatus, the green savior. Savior's time in this world is short. They will burn their life like a dying candle and will vanish to return to the dream world. But until then, they will be with us to help overcome the hardship. However, there was also an uninvited guest. An endless scream pierced the silence of the night, leaving the survivors unsettled. But Angel stood firm, and she convinced everyone that this scream is nothing but a next game. We will hunt down the screaming beast, and end this noise forever. We are hunters, warriors, and we are no longer afraid of the beast, right? Who's with me? Her words encouraged everyone, and that courage has led to a new innovation in a lantern. With the light of courage inside them, they will find the power to act against the threat of enemies in the dire situation. We also built a catarium and made a king spear, catgut bow, and three pieces of rawhide armors, another set of headband and a vest, plus a pair of gloves. One evening, Snow felt a piercing gaze, and he looked upon the horizon and found another hooded knight. She was Snow's another mentor, the one who saved Snow when he was young. Where is Shade? she asked. Snow told her everything, and in response, she drew her sword. I see you use your sword now, let's have a look. Snow reluctantly drew his. Two swords clashed, and the sound of beating metal echoed, and her sword opened the chest of Snow. Snow fell to his knees. You will have to train yourself unless you want Shade to die. I will have to report this to the Order but I'll come back again. You hear me? I'll come back. And she left the settlement. Ella and Ivory rushed to Snow to treat his wounds, and as he recovered from his injuries, he decided that it is about time we hunt again, for the hunt is where he will find ways to get stronger. Wow, a lot of things happened this year. It started with a hard facepalm, but I guess we managed to find hope, especially Snow is getting stronger. With his four proficiency, he can now swing his sword three times at once. What do you think of this here? Was it good? Bad? Average Kingdom this year? Tell me your opinion on the comments. I must confess a gigantic error that I made this year. To try for intimacy role, you have to first pass the augury role. This year, I totally forgot about the augury role and went straight into the intimacy. 
So this whole bloom of the second generation is based on an error, and I realized it too late. I'm sorry. Let's just pretend that this was all a gift from the Dice God to make up the disastrous role we had last Lantern year. And to be honest, I needed some hope to go on. So that's all from me. I hope you stay well, healthy and safe. And always, thanks for watching this video, and I'll be seeing you next time.